Hi everybody, it's been a while since I've published one of these data visualization critique videos, but something came up in my feed from the Makeover Monday project, project and I thought it would be worth sharing of critique because it was related to a visualization that I was looking at and thought it'd be worth sharing. So the first visualization that I was looking at that thought this could maybe use a bit of a change or a bit of an edit uh, is this website from North American Moving Services. The title here is Where Did Americans Move in 2022? And we have a right here, National Movers Study. So right away, I'm thinking, well, there's a study involved here. So let's start with the visualization. And again, just like every other critique, we don't exactly know what the creator's constraints are, their tools, their, their, what they're trying to get at, what their bosses are saying, but we take it at, at face value what we have here. So let's take a look at this interactive map. So we have two drop down menus uh, and two filters here. And it's a little weird the way it works. You kind of have to scroll. You can't really click. You kind of have to scroll through these. And then there's the state over here. We're gonna come back to that in a second. But I just wanna go down and then, and then come back up to the map. And so you can see we have two colors, blue and red, high inbound, high outbound, you can see down here. And just one other thing about color, blue and red in the United States tends to be associated with political parties. It's not the end of the world to use it here. It's in their logo, so maybe fine. Um, but it does tend to be associated with political parties in the US, but okay. And then we've got a couple of, of states down here, the, the top five uh, inbound and outbound. And then takeaways from the 2022 moving migration report, which I'm like, oh, this is good. Okay, so there's some, some bullet points here about this and that and the other. And um, okay, neighbor, this is some blog post. Um, the uh, Houses, this is uh, another blog post at NerdWallet. Um, and then going down here and notice that, you know, still a bit more, there's a methodology, a summary of findings. There's not, I mean, you can click through all these, there's not a report. Like I'm still waiting for the report. So there's not a report. So maybe this is just my background of like expecting a report to be like a PDF report, but okay, so it's not a study per se, okay? So now let's talk about the data visualization itself. Let's start here. I'm just gonna scroll through. Now notice, that when I scroll, and I have to scroll on my mouse, I'm going through the window, the map moves around. It's very jarring. It's very jarring to see it move this dramatically, right? It's a little off-putting, I, uh, I would say. Um, and notice that if even if I click on a state, okay, I click on Georgia, it zooms in, and I just get these two numbers. That's all I get, in and out. I mean, there's not a ton of information here. So the question we always have to ask ourselves is, when it comes to data visualization, particularly an interactive visualization, does it need to be interactive? And in this case, I don't really think it does. And you'll see also that scrolling back out, I didn't even realize this until I just clicked, that scrolling back out to the full view requires a couple of clicks back out. So I'm clicking on Illinois here, it zooms in, It's again, it's pretty, I don't know, pretty jarring. And then I click again to get back out to the full view. But I don't really see these moves in and out, you know, I, I just see these sort of, um, you know, these top, uh, these top states. Now, by comparison, I'm going to show you this one, migration patterns, this one is from Atlas, and I'm going to zoom down here. And you can see there's there's some, uh, uh, some search bars here. But notice that here, this is a static visualization. Okay, you can see my little windows pop up here when I get this. This is a static map. And notice it has the US and Canada, and it has um, the ins and outs in both states labeled. You can see they have the inbound in blue, the outbound in red, and then the gray at the bottom is that it's, it's balanced. And so a little bit more balanced there. And so here, we don't have that jarring animation effect. Um, and we have all the data sitting right in front of us. It's in a map, maybe it's not the best way, we'll come to that in a second. Um, but we don't have that, that interactivity. Notice also as we go down here, um, similar sort of thing as the previous example, where we've got the inbound and the outbound and the list of the states. But also as we go down here, um, we actually have um, full results. So there actually is a study here, um, a download, which I'm not gonna do here, download the media kit. So it's just an interesting comparison that seems to be based out of some data set that I haven't gone into. Um, here on the Atlas site, you could actually go see it, whereas on the previous site, you couldn't. And the interactive visualization versus the static visualization. Now I only found out about this 
visualization from Atlas because Andy Kriebel, which I'm going to click over here, uh, who runs the Makeover Monday product, project, um, uh, put out this visualization, one of many that others had created, somewhat uh, similar um, in uh, the sort of tile grid maps. And you can go explore his YouTube channel. And I'm going to click over here so we can see the actual visualization and what Andy and many others have done uh, sort of similarly is you can grab all of the data and you can see the inbound and the outbound in each of these little tiles. And so here the interactivity does, I think, a better job, right? So here the interactivity allows us to explore. And so that is what we can explore if we want to play with it. But also sort of from a zoom out level, like this also kind of works as a static visualization because you can see, especially because Andy did this really smart thing of adding this little black dashed lines, you can see where some of the, uh, let's just say the blue segments fall below uh, that, uh, that uh, horizontal line here in Tennessee, North Carolina, Washington, and Idaho. And so I think you have the interactivity which enables people to do certain things if they want to explore it, explore the data in a more detailed way, but also works as a static visualization. But I think going back to the original, the animation here and the usability of this original piece, I think just kind of doesn't work. It's a little too jarring. It really doesn't work on mobile. I tried using it on my phone and really couldn't even uh, play around with the drop-down menu. In here, the drop-down menu is kind of like just a big scroll um, and just uh, I find it sort of not quite intuitive to use. So uh, when you're building your interactive visualizations, you want to think about how people are actually using the buttons and the filters and the drop-down menus. It's not just about does the map look good. You want to think about using all these features in interactive data visualization. So I hope that was useful, something for you to think about. If you want to explore any of these visualizations or Andy's work or watch the video of how he built it in Tableau, check out the links in the notes below this video. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for other videos on this YouTube channel.